Do you boldly proclaim Jesus to those around you, even at the risk of ridicule or persecution? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Welcome to Aid to the Church in Needs, Where God Weeps, a program dedicated to the situation of the suffering church around the world. Myanmar is one such country where Christians are suffering severe persecution. Christians make up less than 1% of the total population and the majority of these find themselves among the ethnic tribes ranging along the border between Myanmar and Thailand. Most of the population live in small villages and towns with an average daily income of about $1. Many struggle just to have one meal of rice a day. Only 20% have electricity and only 25% of young people go to school. With poor sanitation and health service, the population is quickly subjected to diseases such as tuberculosis, cholera, and malaria. With over 100 tribal groups, the country's ethnic landscape is the most diverse in Southeast Asia. It is an explosive patchwork, and the coincidence of ethnicity and religion has deepened the divisions between the ethnic groups. Government Violence and persecution against these ethnic tribes have forced many to flee across the border into Thailand. The government responds by forcible relocation, village burnings, and extrajudicial executions. Additionally, the ill equipped government forces continually confiscate food and use civilians for forced labor. The Catholic Church, the Thai government, and other NGOs have set up refugee camps to provide education, stability, and food. We are doing specifically for the most vulnerable person, uh, the senior citizen, the orphan, the handicapped. These are the target people. It is more or less 20,000 that we are taking care of. For the church, this ongoing ethnic cleansing is particularly poignant as the majority of the ethnic tribes are Catholic. Burmese people, uh, I mean the Catholic people, is difficult to be promoted in the government. If we want to build the church, it is not easy. If we want to celebrate a big event, we need to ask permission. And when the priests want to travel from one village to another village, you are under control. There are many restrictions to the work of the church. Whereas the government is giving money to the Buddhists to build the new pagodas all over the country. In the communist regime, they are afraid of the church because the church is worldwide network, very organized. So when you have the problems in one area, the others all over the world pay attention to that incident. This is why the church should be controlled, because it is powerful. In today's first reading, after Peter and John preached about Jesus' resurrection and attributing the healing of a cripple to him, they faced persecution and harassment from the Sadducees. To review, the Sadducees and Pharisees were religious Jewish parties in Jesus' time. The Pharisees believed in resurrection, while the Sadducees did not. The Sadducees were from the aristocracy and controlled the Sanhedrin, the supreme political, religious, and judicial body at the time. But after the destruction of the Jerusalem Temple in 70 AD, the Sadducees disappeared, and today's Judaism takes after the influence of the Pharisees. Their differences ended with one similarity. They were both critical of Jesus. The Sadducees objected to the apostles' preaching of Jesus' resurrection and thus arrested Peter and John. In spite of this, or because of this, 5,000 were converted, a fantastic number in so short a period of time. We reflect on the boldness of Peter. He who denied Jesus three times and hid during the passion of Jesus is now the staunchest defender and proclaimer of the faith. He himself admitted that he was not a good speaker, much less an orator. That's in Corinthians, and yet his courage and speech convinced many. 
How did he become transformed in so short a time? Evidently, the resurrection of Jesus convinced him, but the power of the Holy Spirit emboldened him to bring Jesus to the rest of mankind to the point of offering his own life. We too may know and believe in Jesus, in the ordinariness of our lives, be it in our profession or our hobbies, such as sports, gardening, baking, music, and other creative endeavors. We are asked by Jesus to use those skills and talents we have to fish on the starboard, the right side, and bring more souls to Him. Even our small efforts, for as long as we constantly try, by speaking about Jesus, by the constant gratefulness we have that radiates with joy and peace as we handle our daily challenges, by our small acts of kindness to the poor, by our willingness to forgive and forbear, all these will yield some catch through the grace of our Lord, as we are all called to be fishers of men. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, use me mightily by strengthening my faith, by empowering, emboldening me to proclaim your truth. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.